Hello everyone and welcome back to Historically Inaccurate. Oftentimes history can feel pointless, but my job is to make it a little less that way. Today we are going to be continuing our mini-series Psych History. We are going to be looking into some basic principles of psychology and tying them back to American history. Whether you're here for the history or the psychology, you're bound to learn something new. So let's jump in to the wonderful world of American propaganda. <laughs> When World War II started, most of the general public in America didn't want to get involved because of how bloody World War I was. Therefore, the United States instituted isolationism and neutrality. Eventually, though, the United States realized the threat that the Axis powers posed, so they came up with a way that indirectly helped out the war effort by supplying weapons to Great Britain. In order to accomplish this, the U.S. passed the Neutrality Act of 1939, which allowed other countries to buy war-related supplies from the United States as long as the countries paid up front. Naturally, there was opposition to this. The most notable was the Army's Chief of Staff, George Marshall. He believed with fair reasoning that since France caved to the Nazi attack, so would Britain. Marshall believed that if U.S. gave Britain weapons, these weapons would eventually fall into Nazi hands. Still, the U.S. didn't want to get involved in a major war directly. Then Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, intending to cripple the U.S. Navy. After that, everything changed. The government was angry with the Axis powers, and they were out for blood. As it happens, World War II was a great place to settle our differences. Of course, the general public was incredibly mad at this. Soon, in order to get public back on their side, the government started to use all sorts of propaganda to gain national support. Propaganda plays on your emotions and persuades you to think a certain way. It uses seven methods in particular to do this. The first method is labeling. In essence, labeling is just calling people names. You've probably seen this before on the school playground, but it's actually a very effective way to dehumanize your enemies. The second method is using promises. These promises are incredibly, well, promising, but they are never very specific and often can't be delivered on. This is most obvious in war bond propaganda. People were promised that if they bought a war bond, they would be guaranteed profit, somehow. <laughs> the third is to use a credible spokesperson. The American people listened to FDR because he was an authority figure and a trustworthy leader. The government also used icons to empathize with the American people. There aren't many great examples of this, but some of the standard are mascots like Uncle Sam, Pop Culture Reference, and Popeye. The fifth propaganda tactic is to appear as if you are a plain member of the general populace. Take me for example. You subscribe to my channel because I'm your average Joe, trying to get more internet points than the next guy. Whoops, sorry, I dropped my AirPods. Wow, that was really bad. The next tactic is personal testimonials, in which somebody uses a personal story to convince the public by pulling on their heartstrings. For example, our editor is currently locked in a box, editing videos until we get to 100 subs. Please make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, hit it as hard as you can, crack that phone screen. Anyways, a popular testimonial was Pearl Harbor with very creative slogans like Avenge Pearl Harbor. Up next is cherry picking, which is when you use one piece of evidence to support your point, specifically ignoring the rest. This tactic is especially strong because it can make even the most absurd claims seem fully grounded in reality. This was a heavily abused during World War II. The propaganda would pull exaggerated numbers without context to manipulate the American's point of view. And finally, we come to bandwagon. Essentially, it's when you say everybody's doing it, so you should do it too. Speaking of which, you should subscribe to this YouTube channel because everybody on the planet is doing it. My mother, my daughter, my daughter, no, I don't have a daughter, okay. And that is all I have today on the science of propaganda. I really hope you enjoy this video and that you'll use your new knowledge sometime of the past and the future. It's all mumbo jumbo, time is a lie. I'm Professor Will and this has been Psych History.